Welcome back to Engineering Acoustics. Hi, this is Professor Ryan Hart. We know how sounds transmit through layers of moderate thickness according to longitudinal wave propagation. In this video, we'll learn how waves pass through flexible walls due to bending waves. So let's get started. We know that wave propagation through layers or walls is first and foremost governed by longitudinal wave propagation. Solids, liquids, and gases support longitudinal waves. But when the walls are flexible, shear waves may develop. Solids support shear, unlike fluids. So when an acoustic wave is incident upon a solid structural surface, shear waves will develop in the structure which re-radiate as sound on the other side of the wall. Many common building, vehicle, and product materials give signs of this type of dependence of wave propagation. So if we wish to determine the full picture of sound transmission through panels, we need to study both longitudinal and shear wave development. We will use the term panel to refer to a flexible wall, and the general transmission loss of a panel has a number of unique characteristics. The plot that's shown here is transmission loss as a function of frequency. To date, we've been looking at transmission loss data that falls roughly in this frequency range here. At low frequencies, the panel vibrates. We have not yet studied this condition of transmission loss of panels. This is a resonant phenomenon proportional to the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions define the structural vibration modes, and if sound is incident at low frequencies on the panel, the structural modes will be excited, which easily re-radiates sound to the other side. This is a stiffness-controlled regime of the transmission loss. If we consider the mid-frequency range of the transmission loss of a typical panel, we find that it is controlled by the mass of the panel. It has a slope of 6 decibels per octave, or an octave as a doubling of frequency, and we've seen before that doubling the thickness of the panel in this mass-controlled regime would increase the transmission loss by 6 decibels. Conversely, cutting the mass down by one half would reduce the transmission loss here by 6 decibels. At higher frequencies, though, a dip occurs in the transmission loss, and this is called coincidence. This is a resonance phenomena due to synchrony between acoustic wavelengths and bending wavelengths. And at still higher frequencies, the panel transmission loss is damping controlled and may rise up at a higher slope. The central region of this plot that we've currently been looking at in terms of data corresponds to the relevant ranges of frequencies for speech, which is why there is an emphasis on understanding the transmission loss of a panel in this mid to high frequency range. To measure the transmission loss of a panel, we use a two-room facility. We've seen this equation before, where SPL1 is a sound pressure level in a source room, SPL2 is a sound pressure level in a receiving room, SW is the shared walled area, SR is the, is the surface area of the entire receiving room, and A bar R is the total absorption coefficient of the receiving room walls. By using this equation, we can compute the transmission loss of this panel. The acoustic pressure in the receiving room is measured in different ways based on the characteristics of the receiving room. Certain facilities will use either a receiving room that's reverberant or a receiving room that's anechoic. In a reverberant receiving room, we just measure the diffuse field sound pressure level in the room. But if the re receiving room is anechoic, we will take a hemisphere around the panel to measure the sound power. This type of characteristic is shown in the bottom right photo. The source room on the left has a dodecahedron source that creates a diffuse sound field in the source room. The panel separating the rooms is well isolated and securely mounted so that no leaking of sound occurs around the panel. In the receiving room, it's anechoic. One microphone is shown here that would move in a hemispherical shape around the panel surface. To measure the sound power by this approach, we use a hemisphere of microphones that are positioned according to ISO 
ANSI, AS, and other standards. The approach requires that the microphones be at least in the geometric near field, but ideally they would be in the far field. Of course, this is oftentimes very difficult due to the fact that being in the far field is extremely far away for most sound sources. Typical transmission loss data is reported over the frequency range of human speech. So from around 125 hertz to 4 kilohertz, the specific example for a residential stud wall, this goes down to 63 hertz and up to 8 kilohertz. We see the typical trends of the transmission loss for a panel, a rise up, a coincidence drop, and a rise up again. The same thing occurs for a double pane window, although the specific values of transmission loss are different. Likewise, for a commercial insulated door, we have the same trend. In each case, in the mass controlled region, we have around a 6 decibel per octave gain. So for instance, going from 20 dB for the residential stud wall at 63 hertz, up to about 26 dB at 125 hertz. That 6 decibel per octave increase holds. The drop in transmission loss due to coincidence is observed in each case, but that's not necessarily going to be the case for all panels. The, co the occurrence of coincidence depends on how that panel is composed. Take for instance now, instead of a double pane window, we'll introduce a larger gap in between the two panes. This largely eliminates the coincidence drop, although there's still a plateau of the transmission loss in that same frequency region. To summarize what we've learned, the transmission loss of a panel exhibits unique trends that are associated with vibrations, traveling waves, and everything in between. And the standards that we use to measure the transmission loss isolate the transfer of sound from a source to a receiving room through a controlled window where we have our panel test article. The panel composition determines how coincidence is manifest, but all panels show some sort of mass controlled region and the mass controlled frequency range of transmission loss is the most significant deciding factor to choose one or another panel for di different applications in building construction, vehicle design, product design, and so on. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll more carefully examine the mass and stiffness dependence of transmission loss on flexible walls.